the first thing that you need to know about autopilot is these three boxes right up here uh, these boxes tell us what mode we are in when it comes to autopilot so right over here we have our roll modes so it's going to tell us whether we're heading towards the gps vor or a specific heading uh, things of that sort over here it's going to tell us what uh, autopilot status we're in so whether that's autopilot or flight director we'll go over what each of those mean over here is the pitch mode so the pitch mode captures uh, whether we're doing a vertical speed a flight level change or whether we're staying with a specific altitude and altogether the modes that are in green are the ones that are active and occasionally you'll have a white lettering or a white number uh, any of the white lettering means that it is inactive so green is the one you need to pay attention to inactive sure kind of take note to what it is but the green is what is currently happening all right guys now that we're up in the air i'm going to go ahead and show you the first two buttons it's going to be the flight director button and the autopilot button the flight director button is a magenta arrow that pops up and tells you where you need to keep the yellow arrow in order to get to the destination you want or get to the fix that you want so the yellow is actually what the airplane is doing so if we're going like this we are pitching up five degrees uh, now we're going side to side but the flight director is telling us hey this is where you need to be in order to follow the directions you gave me now right now it's in roll and pitch mode so all it's going to tell us to do is stay at this exact roll and this exact pitch but let's say I changed it to heading mode and I've got a heading bug right over here so let's see where did it go heading mode and now see this purple arrow is telling us hey we need to be turning left to hit that heading mode so I'm gonna do that and get as close as possible and once we close in on this heading bug the flight director arrow is going to even out and go to or a, a horizontal position and there we are there now the thing with flight director is it is not going to take control of the stick so you manually have to move you can set something else so let's do another heading bug over that way and your flight director will say hey you need to be turning like this but you manually have to do it if you stay and don't do a thing you're going to continue to go forward or if you're not trimmed out like I am you know you'll go up now if you want the airplane to take over that's when you hit autopilot the AP button now I can completely let go of the stick and it will continue one thing to note with autopilot is it only takes over the stick so the pitch and the roll will be taken over your yaw motion or your rudder is not going to be controlled by the autopilot your throttle is not going to be controlled by the autopilot uh, the trim actually will so the pitch and roll is really the only thing that it touches and the pitch mode has to be set separately from the roll mode so just because you had the hit the heading bug that means it'll go to the heading but that doesn't mean that it's going to go to the bugged altitude that you have and vice versa if you hit it on a vertical speed to get to your uh, bugged altitude it doesn't mean that it's going to go to the heading that you have so you have to come up here and make sure that it's in the correct setting that you want so right now it's in heading and now it's in pitch if you need to change that you'll have to change that separately all right now that we understand the difference between flight director and autopilot i'm going to go ahead and show you the default modes that it puts you in which we kind of touched over this a little bit uh, 
But once we hit flight director, it's going to capture the exact pitch and the exact roll that we're in. So say we want to be straight and level right about there and I'm going to hit flight director and it captured it right there. So now I can manually do this or I can hit autopilot and it will track for me. Now let's say that we actually want to change the attitude we're in. We want to kind of go up and to the left. We can hit what is called the CWS button. So I'm going to go back into flight director so autopilot doesn't fight with me. Let's see flight director. I guess you got to hit the autopilot button. Look I learned something new today. You hit autopilot and it goes straight over to flight director. Now I can manipulate and I'm going to hit the CWS button right here. And it's going to capture that. And I'm going to hit autopilot again. And now it didn't want to agree with me there. So you do have to pay attention, make sure that it went in. There we go. Now I hit autopilot. And now it's agreeing with me. So it's very important in this example to make sure that what you did actually shows up. You should always be checking these three boxes right here before moving on to something else. And actually it's a, a good note to have. These things can still go off so you need to be listening for the beep and watching the, for the flashing yellow. For instance, if we're about to stall, it's going to automatically take us auto, out of that autopilot. I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like right now. I'm going to bring this out. You can see 97. Once we hit the red, um, it is going to start flashing yellow and turn to flight director mode. So at that point, we have to take over. So here we go. I'm going to do it in an unrealistic mode. Hit the CWS button. And there you go. It is now going to try to capture that and watch the autopilot. It's going to start going up. And soon it's going to start losing speed. This might take longer than uh, I was hoping. Let's do a really ridiculous pitch. Right there. And now we're going to let autopilot take over. Autopilot's trying to keep up with that. Trying to keep up. That's ah, actually not doing too bad. There you go. Flashing yellow. I guess it didn't really flash, but it turned yellow. And now we're in flight director, so now I have to take control of it. Go ahead and go to the horizon. And I'm going to hit the CWS button again to capture a new roll and pitch right there and we are back in autopilot boy that autopilot really doesn't like me right now saying what kind of attitudes are you trying to put me in okay so that is the default mode roll and pitch it's not going to take you to any specific location uh, or to any specific altitude it's just going to lock in the current pitch and the current roll as easy as that and now I do have to show you actually where the CWS button is because you can see I wasn't pushing any of these buttons for that the CWS button is something that you would have on your stick. For instance, in the DA-40, it is on the stick, the front part of the stick. You press it in and hold, and it takes off the autopilot for a moment while it's, hold it, while it's held in. And as you pitch, you let go, and the auto, autopilot will turn back on in the attitude you were in when you let go of the button. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so to set your CWS button, I'm going to go ahead and come right up here. I'm going to pause the game. 
That's something convenient that real life doesn't have. A pause button. Uh, and I am in my joystick. I have it set for number 10 right now. So CWS, Control Wheel Steering Mode. That is something that you'll have to look up. So find a button that you want it for. Click Edit. And look up CWS. And you have a couple different options. Uh, in this case, there is a button for both seat A and seat B. Um, doesn't really matter which one you set it for because they're both going to do the exact same thing. Now that we understand the default modes that Autopilot and Flight Director will bring up, we're going to go ahead and identify each of the modes in the roll section. So right now, like we talked about before, roll is just going to keep the exact roll that you had when you push the button. Uh, it's not necessarily going to take us to any point. Uh, it is just going to continue exactly as we have it. So the other modes that we can have are the heading mode and the nav mode. Those are the two basic buttons that we can hit. Heading, as we kind of saw a little bit before, is going to go towards the heading bugs that we have. So we'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. Let's say that we need to go to 090. We set that there we can see 090 is our heading and now we hit heading flight director changes and since we're on autopilot it is going to automatically do that for us now it is not changing our pitch in any way shape or form as a matter of fact it is staying in the straight and level pitch because that's where we had it when uh, we turned on the autopilot all right there we are so it's coming in and it takes a couple minutes to get exactly where you want it to be. Now, like we said before, if there is a strong wind, uh, it is not going to be using the rudder pedal. It is only going to be using the, um, the ailerons. So if you want it to be a little more efficient, you're going to have to do that yourself. So we'll go ahead and say do a 180. We hit that, and since it's already on heading mode, we come up here, heading, it's automatically going to start going towards that. Now, the next mode that we are going to take a look at is the nav mode. And the nav mode is going to follow whatever we have set in the CDI. So right now there's a VOR2, we have the GPS, and the VOR1. Now, let's say VOR1... We have one set up right here and it looks like it has its green identifier. So we're in range. We can uh, get its signal. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the direct to button. And now we're going to go ahead and hit the nav. Now our flight director is going to follow this green line all the way there. And since it's direct to, we're going to fly direct to it. Well, let's say we want to intercept a, another point. We can change this. And our flight director is going to start turning to intercept that line. Now, this will take a while if we let it do its thing. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start talking about GPS. Um, GPS is the exact same. Once you are in nav mode, this will automatically change for you. So VR, VOR1 and VOR2 will say VOR right here. But let's say we're going to do a direct to and direct to um, Lima Golf, Tango Golf. So there we go. We have that set. Now we're going to set GPS. And there's our direct to line. And as you can see, autopilot is turning us around to intercept the GPS line. And those are the basic roll modes that you have. The nav, which will put you in GPS or VOR. The heading, which will have you track the exact heading, the 
magnetic heading that we have here. And we have roll mode, which just captures what attitude of roll you are in when you hit the button or when you hit the CWS button. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about the pitch modes. The PIT or the pitch, like we said before, is going to capture the attitude that you were in when you hit the autopilot button or when you hit the flight director button or the CWS button. It's going to capture that and continue to go at that exact angle of pitch. Now there's a, a few other things that we can do. Uh, the ones that we're going to talk about today is the vertical speed in the flight level change. So just like in the heading mode, we have our bug over here. Uh, it's currently on 200. So let's go ahead and change that to 2,500. There we go. And we'll start with the vertical speed button. The vertical speed button is going to change altitude by paying attention to our vertical speed and that is done in feet per minute so if you're going up it's going up so for instance in this situation 100 feet per minute if you're going down it's you know minus 500 feet per minute so let's go ahead and set that in the pitch mode you can see vs for vertical speed and it's set for plus 100 feet per minute how we change this is coming over to nose up or nose down. And we need our nose to go down in order to intercept 2,500. And actually I'm gonna change that number to 6,500. So nose down. And we're gonna go nose down at, we're gonna really bomb this out and go to nose down at negative 1,000. Now it's tracking right here. You see negative 1000, that's our bug. And it is going down. Now we have this inactive ALTS here. So remember green means that that is what the autopilot is currently doing and ALTS is the inactive. What ALTS does is it continues what the green is until it hits the bug. So it's gonna continue to fall 1000 feet per minute until it hits 6,500, and then it is going to even out. Now this ALTS button pops up automatically when you have a different, um, a different bug set than what you're currently at. So we'll go ahead and watch this as it continues to go down. And actually I am impatient, so I'm really gonna let it go down, let's say really fast 2000 feet per minute now you're gonna see this our speed is going up because autopilot doesn't pay attention to our throttle it, it doesn't control that so there are dangerous things that could happen so for instance let's say I don't want to be in the yellow so I'm really pulling my throttle back trying to get it back into the green well what's gonna happen when we hit our bug and the throttle is pulled back so far. I almost have it to zero right now because we want to get back to the green. Well, now we hit our altitude. Watch this change over here. ALTS, ALT, 6,005. It is now going to hold 6,005. Well, I pulled my throttle back so we wouldn't go so fast. But now that we're here, we're losing a lot of indicated airspeed. And soon enough, we're going to stall out. So we do have to pay attention to our throttle. And that's something that we have to do. Your autopilot will not. That is the, the major danger with vertical speed is you have to pay attention to your throttle. All right, we'll uh, also do a vertical speed to go up a little bit. Let's say we want to go up to it. 8,005 and I'm going to show you what happens if you do stall. Uh, I think we covered this a little bit already, but again, if we do something that is unrealistic, our autopilot will try to do it and eventually fail. So vertical speed, we have that set plus zero. So it's going to stay exactly where it's at. 
But now I'm gonna push this up to something unrealistic. Let's say like 2,500. I'm gonna keep on hitting this, hitting this, hitting this. There we go. We're gonna climb at 2,500 feet per minute. That's impossible in this aircraft. You can see our indicated airspeed is really dropping. We are climbing and our autopilot's really trying to push that. And eventually we're gonna hit this red line and watch what happens up here. Autopilot and we stalled the aircraft. Now it is in our control and it changed over to flight director. All right, so again, there's another instance of vertical speed being a little dangerous. You do have to pay attention. Okay, the next one that we're gonna look at is going to be our flight level change. Flight level change is a very handy one. This is the one that I like to use the most. And what it does is it pitches up or down depending on the indicated airspeed. So you do have to know the airspeeds um, that will be good for a climb and a, a descent. Um, for this aircraft, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm gonna go ahead and pitch for 75 knots. Uh, I imagine that's probably pretty close for the best rate of climb. Um, I'm not 100% sure, so if you do fly a Cessna 172, let me know. I'd love to know. All right, so flight level change. We want to go up to, let's say, 8,500. We have it set there. Now we're going to do our flight level change. And it bugs the exact indicated airspeed that you were at and we are going to have to push uh, nose up or nose down in order to change this speed now it's a little wonky it's kind of reverse um, depending on how you think about it if you want to go up your indicated airspeed will go down so we need to push nose up and you can see your indicated airspeed will go down because the further your nose is up, the less indicated airspeed you have. And I'm going to go all the way to 75. And there we have it there. That's a pretty safe altitude. You're not going to stall. Might be a little slow for a climb. But unlike the vertical speed, it's going to hold that and continue to climb until it hits your bugged altitude. And again, here we have ALTS, which means once it gets to the bugged altitude, it will change to ALT, which holds that specific altitude. And here we go, flight level change. So if we look at our pitch modes, we see it again, flight level change, 75 knots. And we can see over here, 75, and we can see here the bug at 75. And now this may take longer or shorter depending on how many feet per minute you go up and that's dependent on uh, your density altitude and things of that sort. So just because you're climbing at 600 feet per minute, 75, doesn't mean tomorrow you'll be flying or going up at 600 feet per minute. It only pays attention to your indicated airspeed. And as you can see, it's getting real close and it changed over to ALT 8500, the bug disappeared, the bug disappeared. Now we are on ALT. Now this is something that you can also do to descend. So let's go ahead and do that. Descend to 6005. And as soon as we hit flight level change, there is the bug right there. Now in order to go down, we need to push our nose down which will actually bring the indicated airspeed up because as we point down, we go faster. And I'm gonna hit, we're really gonna bomb this because there's no turbulence today. Let's say 145. And there we go. And if you wanna fall even faster, Pull your throttle back because it's going to continue to point down because it's going to have to point down more now that there's less throttle.
But if you're messing with your throttle again, you will have to adjust it once you get down there because your autopilot does not pay attention to your throttle. It does not control it. And here we go, coming into that 6005. Still ALTS. And ALT, 6500. Now since I had the throttle pulled back, it is becoming slow. So manipulate our throttle, push it forward. And that's your flight level change. Um, that's the one that I like to use the most. Vertical speed has its uh, uses, but flight level change is a little bit safer in my opinion. Now let's say you're gonna go up 2,000, back up to 8,500. We're really just going up and down like a roller coaster today. Um, and we're gonna do flight level change and we're gonna climb at 95 now let's say we're going and at some point you decide you know what i don't actually want to go to 8500 let's say i want to go to 6700 we're going to hit this alt button once we get there and it's going to capture the exact altitude you're at i'm actually pretty impressed that i hit the button right at 6700 because it will go to whatever you have. So if you're at 6,698, it'll capture it right there and keep it right there. And when you push that ALT button, uh, it actually does change your bug and everything. And those are the basic pitch modes that we have, uh, the basic roll modes that we have, and the autopilot modes, autopilot and flight director. You do have a few other buttons here that you can learn a little bit more about. That's the APR, the BC, and the VNV. Uh, I'm not going to go over those today. Uh, I have an idea of them, but I, I'm not 100%, so I do want to study up a little bit more about that. Um, I have instrument course coming up next, so I'm sure that I'll have a good amount of knowledge on those shortly. Thanks for watching the very end, guys. I appreciate that. I will be coming out with more G1000 information, so if you did enjoy this, hit the bell above and it will notify you the next time I have a video out. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I do enjoy reading through those, and if you have a question that I am not sure about, uh, I really value that because then I can take it to my CFIs and ask them. Also, be sure to add me on Mixer. I do live stream. Uh, currently, I'm really the only person on Mixer, but I imagine that's going to change because we got the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 coming out.